So in this example, we are being asked to analyze and graph the quadratic function defined by f of x is equal to minus x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now here, even though we're given this quadratic function in its standard form, we're still going to use those same eight steps that we used when establishing the strategy for a quadratic function in vertex form. So with that, the first step is to determine how the parabola opens. So recall that to determine how a parabola opens, we need to think about the leading coefficient. So in this case, we can see that our leading coefficient a is negative 1. And we know that negative 1 is less than 0. So it's less than 0, it's negative, it's concave down like a frown. So we can see that the, pro the parabola is opening downwards. So now that we know the shape of our parabola, we want to go ahead and find the vertex. So let's recall that if we have a quadratic function in its standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, we now know that the vertex is defined by the components where x is equal to minus b over 2a, and we can find y by simply substituting that x-coordinate back into the given function. So let's go ahead here and identify the coefficients of our quadratic function. So looking at this quadratic function in standard form, we can see that we have the coefficients a is equal to negative 1, we have b in this case is equal to negative 4, and we also have the coefficient c is equal to 5. So we're going to use these coefficients with the vertex formula to find the vertex of this quadratic function. So we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is defined by the ratio minus b divided by 2a. So plugging our coefficients in, we have minus a negative 4 all divided by 2 times negative 1. So we can see negative times a negative produces a positive value. So we have positive 4 all divided by negative 2, which leaves us with an x-coordinate of minus 2. So now that we know the x-coordinate of the vertex, we can take this and plug it back into the function to find the corresponding y. So the y-coordinate of our vertex will be f of negative 2, which will be equal to minus a negative 2 squared, minus 4 times negative 2, plus 5. We know negative 2 times negative 2 will produce a positive 4, but don't forget that extra negative on the outside. Negative 4 times negative 2 gives us plus 8 plus 5, which is going to leave us with 9. So we can say, therefore, the vertex or the coordinates of the vertex of this quadratic function are 2, or negative 2, 9. So now that we have determined the shape of our parabola, or how it's opening, as well as the coordinates of the vertex, we need to find the intercepts. So let's begin by finding our x-intercepts. So recall that to find the x-intercepts, we're going to go ahead and set y equals 0, and then solve for x. So here we have minus x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. And notice here, our leading coefficient is negative. So it's going to be a little bit easier if we start by pulling a negative out and then factor. So I'm going to rewrite this, pulling a negative out of each one of these terms. We can say that that's minus x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. And now if we divide both sides of this equation by negative 1, we're going to be left with positive x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So this trinomial is going to be a little bit easier for us to factor. So thinking of two numbers that multiply together to give us negative 5 and combine together to give us 4, we have the following factor in. We can say that this is equal to x plus 5 times x minus 1 is equal to 0. And then thinking about each one of these binomials separately, in the first case, we have x plus 5 is equal to 0. 
And then in case two, we have x minus one is equal to zero. So in case one, to isolate x or to solve for x, we're gonna subtract five from both sides, which leaves us with x is equal to negative five. And very similarly, in case two, to isolate this x, we're gonna now add one to both sides, which gives us x is positive one. So these are our two x-intercepts. And again, since we know that we're going to be graphing this parabola, let's go ahead and write them in their ordered pair form. So our x-intercepts are at the ordered pairs, negative five, zero, and positive one, zero. So now that we have determined the x-intercepts of our parabola, let's go ahead and find the y-intercepts. So we can recall that to find the y-intercept of a function, we need to set x equal to zero and then solve the result for y. So looking at our given quadratic function in standard form, we can say that we have y is equal to minus zero squared minus four times zero plus five. So the first two terms are gonna cancel out, leaving us with just five. And again, since we know that we want to sketch a graph of this function, we can write our y-intercept in the ordered pair form, zero, five. So now we have the y-intercept, we have our two x-intercepts and our vertex. So we're gonna use these four solution points to sketch a graph of the quadratic function. And again, keep in mind that in addition to these four points, you can always create a table of x and y values to find additional solution points on the function on the, your function's graph. So over here on our x-axis, I want to point out that each tick length on the x-axis has a unit length of one, while the scale on the y-axis has a unit length of two. So we've gone ahead and plotted our two x-intercepts, our y-intercept and our vertex. So if we go ahead now and connect these four points, with a smooth curve, we can see the graph of the parabola. So this is y equals f of x. And again, keep in mind that the x-coordinate of your vertex, negative two, the vertical line at this x value is the axis of symmetry. So remember, axis of symmetry, if we were to fold the parabola across this vertical line, we would have a perfect mirror image. Now, from the leading coefficient test at the beginning, we saw that since our leading coefficient was negative, the parabola is opening downwards, making this vertex a maximum point. So if we march right over to the y-axis, we can see that the very largest possible y-value here is not. So this is going to help us in finding the range. But first, let's make a note here to ourselves that the vertex is a maxima, so the maximum point, and that y equals nine, the y-coordinate of the vertex, is the largest possible y-value. So now, last but certainly not least, we're ready to find the domain and range. Now, as always, when it comes to the domain, keep in mind that you're working with a polynomial function of degree two. And polynomial functions have no domain restrictions. So x can be any real number our little hearts desire. So x is an element of the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the range of this quadratic function is dependent on the vertex. So we can see here the very largest possible y value is occurring where y is equal to nine. And then we could have any y value smaller than that approaching an infinitely negative direction. So here we can say that y is going to be less than or equal to nine. So here's your inequality form. And if we wanted to write this in its interval form, we can say that y is an element of the interval from negative infinity up to and including positive nine. So there you have it. Here is our analysis and graph of our given quadratic function.